What we do here is go back, 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 back. And there we go, we are live, I think, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. So good evening, it is Saturday the, I'm not even sure what day it is, the 20th of June 2020. Thank you all for joining us tonight on the live stream. I'm Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. That lovely young lady over there is Kath, so feel free to say hello to either one of us in the chat. We uh, appreciate you tagging along on this Saturday evening. Well, there's not a lot else to do, is there? What else is on TV at the moment? Very, very little. So, yeah, it's been uh, another one of those weeks and the uh, the Covidian times are hopefully, fingers crossed, coming to something of an end. Relaxations are coming in a little bit more and we're getting out and I've just read in the news that Spain appears to be open for business. So if you want to go over and uh, get yourself sangria right up, then yeah, that's definitely a possibility. I'd imagine EasyJet and that are breathing a very, very long sigh of relief. I'm waiting for all of you lot to uh, place your bookings and get on over there onto the beaches and start having some good times, which is what we're hoping to have tonight. But it's unlikely because today we've been building PCs, changing graphics cards, and my Windows installation has gone somewhat flaky. So tonight in the stream, we're going to be discussing graphic card errors, the sort of things we get when you change a graphics card, when you go AMD to NVIDIA or vice versa. And sometimes it goes absolutely perfectly, no problems at all. And a lot of us by now have probably got used to going into the system, removing the old drivers before you t turn the computer off, then putting your new graphics card in and then waiting patiently for Windows to do its thing or installing the new drivers in. Nine times out of 10, it goes exactly as planned. But unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't. Smart calf. Just checking. All right, sound, sound okay? Coming through, loud and clear, good. Happy days. Okay, anyway, so yeah, most of us have a relatively straightforward and easy path when upgrading graphics cards, but depending on what graphics card it is, what version of Windows you're running, and which drivers you're trying to install, you can come into all sorts of craziness. Now, the PC that you can possibly see behind my head is one which I've just built today. Now, this is actually one that has been built for a customer or a consumer and they wanted something with a bit of RGB bling. So yeah, I think we've, uh, I think we've pretty much nailed that one. There is a, a video which we filmed today, actually, whilst we're building that. We have lots of lovely B-roll and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to see that, you can watch that. Hopefully that'll be released on Monday. So hopefully you'll be looking forward to that. It's based around a budget of around about 500 pounds for a gaming PC, but also a general purpose PC with a little bit of video editing, streaming, and all that kind of stuff built in. And we managed to just about do it at 502 pounds based on UK pricing. So if you're uh, thinking of maybe building a PC, definitely check out the video on Monday. It's actually surprising what you can get for the money. I didn't think we were gonna be able to get anything that good for that sort of money. I was thinking we we're gonna have to make some serious compromises, but happy days, Mike's unboxing, come to the rescue, and we've actually built a pretty decent PC. Calf shot a load of B-roll as well, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that's all worked out okay. <laughs> a little bit, uh, yeah, I think the focus might be a little bit off on some of it, but hey, what the hell, just have a few beers and it'll all look absolutely fuzzy and lovely, so yeah, no worries there. So let's say a, uh, a quick hello to some of you in the chat. Now, tonight I've actually got a multi-monitor setup, which is fantastic, thanks to uh, David Aitken, one of our subscribers and Discord members, who actually donated me a 18-inch, uh, sorry, 19-inch, AOC monitor, so I've got that now connected up via my HDMI, so I can see my streaming stuff on this screen. I can see all the comments and questions and see how much lag is actually on the uh, the stream on that monitor. So that's pretty good. And also, I don't need to have to wear the glasses because I can actually see the text rather than trying to squint at whatever is going on this one. So those in the chat tonight, we've got Angry Doge is in the house, Ghost Adder, um, someone's having spelling mistakes or grammar. Grammatical mistakes, I can't even say it, let alone spell it. 
Uh, Gen X YouTube is in the house. Who else have we got? Uh, Sky Stalker is in the house. He's got kids over at the moment. My condolences. Click Tech Kev's in the house says hi all. Matthew Day, time to put the dinner on. That is a regular occurrence. For those of you regular viewers, you'll know that Matthew Day, I'm not sure whether he uses this as kind of like his eating time. So we'll try not to change our schedule to uh, disrupt your eating pattern. <laughs> uh, Kiko Sun says hi. Nigel Thomas says evening guys. Captain Meets Adventures is in the house. Aletta's here. She's back. Uh, actually, interesting one. We did the review this week. I don't know if you've seen it already. If you haven't, uh, do check it out for the Thermaltake View 51, which was a monster of a case. Absolute behemoth. Is that the right word? Yeah, still a little bit on the small side for a letter. So just goes to show you can't please everybody all of the time. And actually, I was actually quite surprised. I was thinking that most people were going to be sending a lot of hate because it is a very expensive case. And it's a very large case. And it doesn't suit everybody, that's for sure. It has a very much a niche market intended, especially at that kind of price point. But generally, whether you lot have all been very kind and just said nice things, or whether or not you generally liked it, uh, it seems to have gone well. And yeah, did get quite a few views. So anyone who's checked out the video already, I appreciate it and thank you for leaving your kind comments. It is appreciated. And also the comments that we get, we do actually get feedback as well from the people that send us stuff. So be it Thermal Take or Noctua, um, whoever it is, we actually do get feedback. So your comments do actually get read. So if there is a video you've watched and you have something to say, or you have some ideas or whatever, do put them in the comments section because they do listen. They may not change anything, but they definitely listen. They do read a lot of the comments. So yeah, keep up the good work, you guys, and keep on leaving those comments, good or bad. Um, who else we got? So Sky Stalker, Keith Crooks in the house. Uh, I'm not too sure how to pronounce this one. Eon, Ewan Ferguson. Not entirely sure. I'd probably obliterate that, but anyway. Good evening to you as well. David Aikens in the house. Uh, only able to keep one eye on this one tonight. Okay, no problem. Uh, Tanaman says, hi tech friends. Got Ferry Flash Powder. Who else? Clinton Davies. If I've missed anyone out, I do apologize. Jack Thomas. Uh, Jack Thomas has actually raised a very interesting but easy to answer question. What is the difference between the Ryzen 5 3600 and the 3600X? Uh, reali realistically, not a great deal. Uh, a few pounds and um, a slightly higher boost clock frequency. It's also a 95 watt part against a 65 watt part. So there's uh, a few subtle differences, but realistically the uh, the real main difference is the stock speeds for both boost and precision boost. So not a massive deal. And a lot of people actually with reasonably good cooling can actually get the 3600 up to 3600X speeds anyway. So if you want to save a little bit of your power overhead, then maybe go for the 65 watt part. Or if you've got a juicy power supply and you've got decent cooling anyway, then maybe you can plump for the 3600X. Keith says, uh, bought new components today, based around a case reviewed by Mike a few months back with plenty of ARGBs. Glad to hear it. Michael Dixon's in the house and he says, uh, twice. <laughs> oh dear, Matthew Day says he's had hours of updating Windows on his netbook and then it failed and rolled back. That is horrendous. We've all been there at some point or other, I think. It does happen. Uh, who else we got? Yeah, uh, Fairy Flash Builder says, point two gigahertz more, so you get 200 megahertz more on the six, uh, 3600X. Salim says, my screen shows the logo and go around dots, uh, but no icons. The screen got smashed in onto the other part of a laptop. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but maybe a, a question you can put onto our Discord a little bit later, or now if you want, the links should be in the video description. If, uh, if any of you have got any detailed questions, you want detailed answers, or you want to speak to someone else, one of the other experts on the Discord, feel free to jump on the Discord, and ask your questions. There's two tech support rooms, so it doesn't get too jumbled up. So if you want to leave a question in there, you're more than welcome. I'll take a look a little bit later. Uh, if not, some of the guys will have Discord running at the moment and will probably be able to help you. And I think Kaf's going to put a link in as well in the chat, just in case you want to use that. Uh, Let me know if 
Let's have a look. Kiko Sun says, I just bought an Acer A515-43 and I've been loving it. That is exactly what is on the desk in front of me at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's actually a really good laptop. It's considering how little it cost when I bought it. Yeah, it's actually a very, very capable unit. And I run the live streams on it every week. I uh, use it for other bits and pieces, a little bit of light gaming. Yeah, it's a good all round laptop and I am very pleased. Although I would quite like to have the newer versions with the 4000 series chips, but you can't have it all. Uh, awesome. Salim Purchase says, hi Churchill. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah, okay. All right, okay. Uh, where did, uh, who else we got to see? Kiko's son's just bought an Acer. A5543. Oh yeah, I just read that. Thank you. Yeah. What else we got? I think I've said everyone else. Uh, Captain Meets Adventure says, with more and more cloud-based gaming services, is all this hardware actually worth it? Would you be better served by maybe upgrading your broadband? It's a, a very valid point. The only thing I can think of, and I've actually experienced that this week, is cloud-based services are very good and they're very useful and they do prevent you having to have lots of high-end hardware, but they all have Every cloud service that I know of, they all have that one massive, massive weakness. And that is, they're in the cloud. If you have any issues at all with your internet provider, which, let's be fair, living in the UK, this is an old country. We're running on a relatively old ecosystem. Even the fiber that has been put down is getting to the point where it's like 10, 15 years old, starting to show its age. Um, Virgin Media customers, I'm sure you'll join me in saying that your system uh, or your broadband can be pretty flaky at the best of times and it's very rare that you'll get the actual rated top speeds. Generally you'll be throttled at some point during the day and as cloud services get more and more kind of mainstream I suppose, uh, although most of you probably do use them to some extent already, but when they do actually kind of roll out so that everyone's using it, it can only get slower which uh, yeah does lead to those problems. And actually, as a side note, this week, um, as some of you probably know, I do work part-time in a retail store as well. And exactly the same thing happened. There is a Teal system, which works via an internet service and runs a SQL server in the cloud. So you, you scan your barcodes and it checks with the SQL server online. The internet connection went down. So the Teal was basically a massive doorstop which was handy because we did need to close one of the doors, but that is not its intended purpose. It's supposed to be a till, it's supposed to be for taking money. And how many of you have had it recently, especially in these COVID times where people have been stretched and you've gone to a store, tried to pay for something, especially with credit cards, that's all done in the cloud. You try and pay with credit card, if the internet's gone down, how many times have you been to a shop and they've said, oh, sorry, we can't take that. Have you got cash at the moment because we can't take card payments because the computer's down or the internet's down or whatever. That is the biggest problem facing any cloud service. Personally, I love cloud service. I think it's a fantastic idea. I would much, much rather have a very small kind of 35, 40 watt machine, which can just play all these things and everything be processed offline or online, but offline of the computer. That would be perfect. Think of all the energy you'd save. Most PCs, gaming PCs, probably gonna be pulling around about 200 to 300 watts at the wall in gaming sessions, which is actually quite a lot. If you think you had 300 watt lights on outside in your back garden, like the PIR lights we used to have, three or four of those running, it'd be like a stadium. That's the sort of electricity you're pulling, just playing a game. So it can use a lot of electricity. So online cloud-based services, uh, where they do the processing for you, maybe it is the way ahead to save us all a little bit of money. But yeah, it does have its limitations. So we went completely off track there, but I thought I'd go on to that. Yep, a letter brings up a good point there. There's no upgrading my broadband without moving. There are people in more rural, rural, rural areas. Oh, sorry for me to say. Uh, in the UK, we do suffer from that as well as the US, where even though we're a much smaller country, some of the more um, distant or rural area, areas, places like, <laughs> I can't say that word at all. I've become Jonathan Ross. Jonathan Ross. Um, yeah, there's people who live even in relatively kind of 
highly populated areas in the UK, such as like Taunton, Exeter, Exmouth. If you live on some of the outskirts or the peripheries, you're lucky if you get two megabyte broadband. And if you have got it, generally it is laggy as hell. So the chances of being able to use any real time online services are drastically diminished. So uh, yeah. Michael Dixon says, I would just like to thank Mike for all the info. Just built my PC and all your info helped so much. Things have changed since <laughs> CS 1.6, lol. It certainly has. And sorry, I'm, I'm standing on a screw or something underneath my desk, which is from the build earlier today. So let me just sort that out. I'm not scratching my balls, honest. It wasn't a screw, it was a cable tie or a tweezer, as they call it, if you're at the verge. Uh, Matthew Bennett says, hi Mike and Kath, hope you're both well. We are very well. Matthew Bennett is one of our uh, contributors as well. Sent us our, um, Kath is pissing herself for some reason, I don't know why. Is it because I just can't speak? It probably is. Uh, Matthew sent us this week the, uh, well, actually it was last week, the uh, Fractal S36 cooler, the water cooler. <laughs> What's that? Have you lost your shit? She has lost her shit completely. She is actually wetting herself. She's gonna have to go leave the room and go and use the lavatory. <laughs> she's, she's a funny old girl. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Matthew sent us that. And yeah, it was a great video. Really enjoyed making it. And actually that is a, a damn good cooler. We are gonna be doing a like a, a bench test, group test, shootout type thing with various coolers. I did say in the video, if you leave comments in the video, uh, of coolers you'd like to see compared, then uh, we'll try and make that happen. And actually a lot of you have been saying the same thing and a lot of you have requested the Scythe Fuma 2, which um, I've have seen kind of on my periphery and is one of those things that I've, I've looked at and thought, oh yeah, it's not bad. There's a few little quirks about it, which cosmetically I'm not entirely down with. It's got some weird kind of quirks, but you look, you lot have demanded it, so uh, we're going to have to put our money where our mouth is and going to have to get one of those. So yeah, the, the Fuma 2, actually in a moment on Amazon is out of stock, so I've not been able to buy one this week, but I'm definitely going to look into that and we'll try and compare it. But you know, back to the Fractal, that is a, an awesome cooler. For me personally, the lack of RGB is a little bit disheartening, but you can't have everything. It is still a fantastic cooler and does very, very well. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, I've scrolled too far. It happens. Uh, Captain Me's Adventures saying, for example, I have a PlayStation TV that cost me £20 and I'm playing PlayStation now. I've also got Stadia, which is improving. Yeah, I did try uh, GeForce Now when it started and I wasn't entirely impressed. I didn't manage to get anywhere near 1080p gaming sessions and it was a little bit kind of, uh, I think it's probably a little bit beta, so maybe I might have to have another look at that again. Uh, da, da, da. Sky Stalker says uh, he gets one bar of 4G in his office, and that sucks. Although probably if you're a tin hat wearing person, having only one bar of 4G in your house could actually be a selling point, so think of it like that. And hopefully you'll get less than that with 5G. Controversy, I didn't say that. Uh, Clinton Davis says, I do think after the new consoles, I wonder if they will be the last of their kind. Therefore, cloud-based gaming will soon become the norm, I'm guessing, at some point. Uh, yeah, it is kind of getting that way. We are seeing more and more consoles being uh, made without any optical drives or any form of kind of transfer like that. Maybe it is. I think for a lot of people who own consoles, that is the last thing that you want because it's really nice to be able to go to like a game store, pick up a used uh, DVD, CD, whatever it may be, cartridge, and buy it at kind of like half the price and play the game. So if m most people, I think if you, if you buy games online to play as an online service or with DRM and all that kind of stuff, especially with Steam and things like that, you generally tend to find that games kind of do stay at their kind of high-end selling price for a long, long time, and then all of a sudden you get like a Steam sale and it goes to like a 20% of the price or something ridiculous. It doesn't seem to be that gradual fall off. And um, with obviously online services, they're gonna try and pump up the prices as much as they possibly can to help pay for the infrastructure, 
bandwidth, all that kind of stuff. Whereas used games and being able to go to like a local market, CEX, those kinds of places and pick up a used title for a few dollars is amazing. I did notice, um, oh, what's his name? Dr. Thingy is very British reviews. Can't remember his name now. But he said he picked up a used PlayStation 3 for like 60 pounds and then bought GTA for six pounds. Trying to get GTA for six pounds, although that's that's probably a bad example because that's been free recently. But you know what I mean? If normally you'd pay kind of top dollar for that kind of game because it's a popular title. But anyway, let's move on from that because <laughs> I'm I'm undoing my own theory as I speak. Uh, Richard says, even Mike and Kath and everyone else, did you see Kerry Holzman's stream last night? Only four hours. That's pretty impressive. So he, he managed to get at, at least, guy. yeah, he, he managed to get his uh, CPU cooler on then. At least he managed to get that part done. It will, 40 minutes. Yeah, actually, yeah, 40 minutes. I did take 40 minutes to put on a Freezer 33 the other day in a stream. So, yeah, hands up, guilty as charged. Although I did keep going. I didn't just stop and then talk about old times or why you don't need 17 fans in your case all that kind of stuff anyway <laughs> uh Mucklis says hi everybody good evening to you or good afternoon depending where you are uh salem says it's 1 a.m here and i'm v sleepy well it is 9 30 here and i'm v sleepy too it's been a long day Alexa says, looking at the prices of new consoles, I think some gamers are going to be switching to PC. Yeah, that was that was, uh, that was was always one of the selling points of the PC. Not only was it like super flexible and you could either have like a, a real budget thing, which basically was a potato, or you could have a super high end PC if you had the money. But also with the PC, obviously, one of the really, really kind of enticing factors was the ability to basically pirate games and download games or get copied CDs. Now I appreciate you could do that as well with your PlayStation's Xboxes, but normally they would need some form of chip or modification, which made it a little bit more difficult. But with a PC, essentially, as long as you had a modem or some form of broadband, you could get onto um, LimeWire, uh, Kaza, various other places, and you could just file share games. It was uh, good times for all. Highly illegal, and I don't condone it, but it did happen, and it did, I think it probably paved the way for how the PC has become what it's become. Uh, Angry Doge says, Doctor Who, yeah, that's the one. Doctor Jake, thank you, uh, Kev. Click Tech, Kev says, Kerry for the win. Yeah, what a great guy. Ben Shield says, hi guys. Captain Me's Adventures, physical games will go like DVD or CD. Um, when was the last time you guys bought one of them? CDs and DVDs is, um, yeah, it's a little bit different. I think with media the way it is now, and again, most people, if with digital media, that has made it slightly easier for piracy. Lord knows some of the more positive videos I've done have been on basically how to watch movies and TV online. And obviously that does kind of border into that whole piracy thing. Is it legal? Is it legit? Should you watch stream content? Especially like things like iPlayer on the BBC. If you've got a TV license, you should be able to watch it. Blah 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 blah. Sky Movies, etc. Yeah, it's a it's a very grey area. But online for certainly for DVDs and CDs, where people tended to have a library. That was the whole thing back in the day. You buy a DVD and you buy like a box set and you build up this huge library. And I think the reason why that is probably gone is. More, more for a physical size because literally having all these DVDs, especially with VHS, if you had your VHS library, you'd have bookcase after bookcase after bookcase and maybe still only have a couple of hundred films, whereas now you can stick a couple of hundred films on a flash drive, for instance. So I think it's more because it's actually very convenient and also can be pretty much free as well. So there is that to it. Uh, Ben Shill says, ha, I remember LimeWire. Yeah, LimeWire was like a modern one. There was really old ones. Click Tech Kev says, I still buy loads of CDs. Yeah, I think people still do. Looking at the Amazon sales, uh, DVDs, CDs do still sell in the, the truckloads. Not as much for everybody. It's not like if the, a new single comes out, you go and buy a CD. That is pretty much a thing in the past and people do tend to use things like iTunes or just stream it or listen to the radio. 
Remember that? The thing in the corner, the little speaker and a dial? Uh, Salim says, if I sleep now, then how will I talk to you? I think they're having problems with understanding how to go on Discord. Ah, uh, right, okay. Uh, if you're not sure how to go on Discord and talk with us, um, but you can just type in, it's like a, a chat based thing. You don't have to talk, you can just type it in, type a question in and we'll answer it. And then when you wake up, you'll have all your answers there, ready to go. How's about that? <laughs> uh, ben Shill says, I use Spotify these days. Spotify is really good and especially the free service. Uh, Matthew Day says, something that might be worth a review. If you're stuck with a VGA monitor and no VGA card, uh, is the 699 HDMI to VGA converter on Amazon. Does it lag? Does it? That's a good question, actually. Um, I used to buy quite a few of those HDMI to VGA adapters for older PCs, like old really Dell, old Dell workstations that we used to buy, like five, six of them to run monitors on the TV set. Most of the monitors and TVs are HDMI, so we used to have to get those adapters to convert the VGA signal into HDMI. So I've used quite a lot of those. Steve Darby says, I've got a load of LPs in the loft thinking of getting a record player. Probably a good idea. Or just keep the LPs and then uh, wait until they're worth a ton of money and then sell them all. Uh, Talanaman says, I buy online movies from Apple, etc. Uh, when there are a couple of quid and you get this, the 4K version for the same sort of money. Yeah. Uh, Alessa says, if games were still on DVD, I'd be playing more games. I can't afford to have my PC being locked up downloading a game for a week. That is definitely a thing. It is, um, for those that are struggling on bandwidth and limited, having a, a physical piece of media is brilliant, especially for like, some of the more modern games, like Doom, for instance. Doom was like, was it 50 gigabytes and it expanded to 80? For, for a lot of people in rural areas that I can't say, or even in kind of developing countries where they're still not getting those broadband speeds, having a physical media could be the difference between having your internet tied up for like maybe two or three days, which is pretty insane. Keith Crook says WinMX back in 2002. Uh, Captain Meese Ventures says iTunes killed CD and Netflix killed Blockbuster. The issue is the younger generation the issue is the younger generation are not. When was the last time George or Angel wanted a CD? Um, I don't think they even know what a CD is. They used to the only CDs books. they had would have been, yeah, they used to have talking books years ago. They, they used to have tons of those. And, and actually audio books on cassette. Wow. Matthew Day says the size of some date updates is crazy. Yeah, uh, if you're a Fortnite player, firstly, shame on you. Why? <laughs> why? Just why? Um, Fortnite, the updates on Fortnite generally tend to be three and a half, four gigs at least, which is just madness. It really is. Show to Mercy 2020 says my first PC hard drive was only four gigabytes. I think my first, or sorry, our first computer, 320 megabyte hard drive. I think it was 320 megabytes running Windows 95 and I'm pretty sure we had to use the drive compressing tool after we installed it to compress the space that was left to put stuff on. That was when things were bad. <laughs> yeah, Clinton Davis says my first hard drive was 270 megabytes and had four megabytes of RAM. Yeah, I uh, I can I can remember those times. I'm pretty sure. I think our first PC had four megabytes. I think it did. Wow. <laughs> Windows was on about ten floppy disks. It was I think it was actually closer to thirty, from what I can remember. Windows ninety five was on. No, I threw them all away. But we did have I had one of those CD cases. Uh, sorry floppy drive cases like the double-sided one about so big and one side was completely full and there was about another five or six on the other side and if you had a minimal installation you could probably get away with about 
15 to 20 floppies. If you did the full installation with all the media stuff, well, I say media stuff, like media player and uh, network neighborhood and all that kind of stuff, you could choose if you installed it. Then you'd maybe use all the 33 discs and it took absolutely ages. It was good, good fun. <laughs> Unless it says, I remember playing, sorry, paying $200 for a 20 gigabytes hard drive. Yeah, the, uh, it's, we are really blessed with what we've got these days. We really are. And actually, I'm not sure what I've done with the camera tonight, but my tan is looking damn fine. Sorry. It's just, not just It's not realistic. Yeah, in real life, I don't look nothing like that. No, I'm looking. No? No. no nothing like it. <laughs> this, like today, it. this camera has been playing all kinds of silly buggers. It's been, like, super bright overexposing. Then it's been doing pitch dark. Then even with the ISO levels right down to like 200 or 400, which for those of you who don't know, that is basically darkness unless you've got full bright lights on you. And even that, inside the case, it was just like, pew, as if someone had put floodlights on. I don't know what is going on. Turned it on and off again, as you do, thinking it's a PC and it will rectify itself, and it didn't. I don't know what is going on. It's very, very strange stuff. Very, very strange. Clinton Davis says Win95 was indeed 30 discs. Thank God for when CDs came about. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Skystalker says my first computer had 16K. And that was the advanced version. The basic version had 4K. 1997 Radio Shack TRS-80 Model 1. Wow, yeah. I my, my first kind of PC PC or computer would have been probably... I think I had a Spectrum 48K first and then, no, sorry, VIC-20, which had 4K. And if you wanted 16K, you could buy a RAM pack to put in it. That was uh, well, horrendous. I think the, the ZX81 had 16K and seemed like an upgrade. <laughs> Very strange. Anyway, let's talk about the, um, oh, actually, there's a quick question here. Captain Meets Ventures says, Mike, does your Wi-Fi mesh app show you your monthly internet usage? I am on 720 gigabytes. Um, my, I don't think the Wi-Fi mesh does, but I think it, my cable modem does. I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, Commodore 16 rocks. I. The Commodore 16 is one of the few that I didn't own. I had the Commodore VIC-20. I don't think I had, I didn't have a 64. Caf had that. Did you have the Commodore 64? Yeah. yeah. I had the uh, ZX81 Spectrum 48K. I was more of a Spectrum person. I didn't really get on with the Commodores. I liked the keyboards, but I didn't like the, uh, the, the, the ecosystem. Yeah, they had the Acorn Electron. That was a 32K, I think, wasn't it? I had that one as well. Very. Right, anyway, let's get back onto the topic of what this video is all about, because otherwise I get loads of hate in the video comments and they'll be like, eh, you did a thumbnail and you didn't talk about it, so let's talk about it. Um, right, let's answer S Salim quickly. Salim, uh, please tell me how can I contact you? I am sleepy, this is Pakistan and 1.30 a.m. Best thing to do, drop us an email, mike at mikesunboxing.com. Make a list of all your things that you need looking at and we'll get back to you. Can't say fairer than that. And you never know, I might even read it. I do read all the emails, eventually. Okay, all right, let's talk about what I've been doing today. So we built this PC, as you can see behind me, and it's, uh, well, you kind of, my big fat head wasn't in the way. You see it now? My big tanned fat head. Um, it had, it's been one of those things where, you know what it is, you take a, a drive out of a machine and you put it into something else and then you do some benchmarks or you build something else. And I've used that hard drive, I bought it brand new, but I've used it to install Windows on at least four or five PCs and done some stress testing, benchmarks, crashes, all that kind of stuff. So Windows is pretty much junked. Now, I should really just make a base image, but because I've used different hardware, different graphics cards, different uh, network cards, all that kind of stuff, you know what it's like. It gets a little bit flaky and it starts to have a bit of a funny five moments. Also, at a point, I bought the ASRock uh, B450 Pro 4, which was doing some weird stuff, like losing the time. So I wasn't entirely sure whether the motherboard was a little bit screwy or whether or not it was something else. Also, the graphics card, every now and then, for some reason, just drops down to uh, VGA resolution. I don't know why that is. So there's lots of kind of contributing factors. So I thought, I know what I'll do. 
I'll do a Windows reinstall. But then I thought to myself, well, actually, Windows is activated on there, so I don't really want to lose the activation, although I can quite easily get a key from premiumcdkeys.com. Don't forget to check out the link in the video description. Discount code Mike's Unboxing. Quick plug there. Um, but also, I, I could get a key quite easy, so I could just wipe it, start again. But I thought for the sake of a video and also for the point that you can actually do it, and I do get loads and loads of questions literally every day on both the AMD and the NVIDIA graphics cards. I did, I've done two or three videos on each one on the DDU, how to remove the drivers, how to reinstall them, uh, error 43 or error 43. I think I said error 42, didn't I, earlier? You did. That's probably why it's wrong in the description. It should be error 43. Uh, also, there's the opencl.dll error, which comes up very often, especially if you're using, um, there is a video um, editing software, a free one. I can't remember what it's called now, but we get it. Is it Hit Filmmaker or something? Or Hit Filmmaker Plus? Something along those lines. But anyway, that comes up every now and then where people have done something and it doesn't run because OpenCL is missing. All those kinds of things. It's just, it is a pain. And you can spend literally hours trying to fault find it, uninstall the drivers, use uh, display driver uninstaller. Sometimes it, it'll be useful and it will actually do it. And as I said in the video, this works for kind of 99% of cases. And generally it does. But unfortunately, a lot of people have answered the video saying, I must be in the 1% because it doesn't work for me. So what you can do is, if you don't want to completely blitz your Windows installation because you've downloaded umpteen terabytes of games and you don't want to have to reinstall it all because we all know that is an absolute pain in the backside. Also, things like Microsoft Office, if you bought that and installed it, you don't want to knacker up your keys because you've paid for them, etc, etc. It is just a pain in the backside. So what you want to do is you want to repair Windows files. And there's loads of ways you can do that. You can use command lines, you can use uh, scanning tools, all that kind of stuff. And generally, it is very, very simple if you can follow some simple instructions. But actually, another way of doing it is literally just to reinstall Windows over the top of itself, which is something which was really common back in the Windows XP days. Um, probably in the Windows 7 days as well, and definitely earlier on than that, Windows 98, etc. you'd run Setup EXE over the top, and it would actually solve a lot of problems. These days, if you want to solve problems, it's quite tempting just to download the latest ISO of Windows and just blitz the computer, install it all again, and hopefully it will, uh, it will retain your license keys, or at least when you put them back in or you log back in, it will activate Windows. So what I did today is I downloaded a USB with the latest Windows 10 on there, and literally all you need to do is to either copy the files from the USB stick into a folder on your desktop, or you can run it from the actual USB stick itself and just run the installer from within Windows. Obviously, if you're having problems getting into Windows, not so easy. You have to rectify that first, at least get into safe mode or disable your VGA so you can get in, but it's uh, quite an easy way of doing it. So I'm gonna actually get that running now in the background, and also I'm gonna take a, a drink of water. So Windows creation tool, from the Microsoft website, download it, and just download the generic version of Windows or whichever version is suitable for you. So if you're using Windows 10 Home, make sure you download the Windows 10 Home version. If you're using Pro, use the Pro version. Again, 64-bit, 32-bit. I'd imagine most of you are probably using 64-bit Pro by now, but if you're not, just obviously do make sure you get the right version, because if you try and install the wrong version over the top, because effectively this is an upgrade, you may need to update your license key, so do bear that in mind. But anyway, I've got that on my stick, so I'm going to plop that in. Actually, I better look where I'm plugging it so I don't turn and press the wrong button. Uh, we'll use the USB 3 header. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I should say USB 3.0 because uh, there's somebody who keeps on watching our videos and they get very triggered when I don't say it right. So, yeah. So just run Setup EXE and it says on there, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And click yes. And that will go through and start Windows. So if I actually change to number four, hopefully you can see that if it ever... Hey, there we go. See, you can focus if you really want to. So it says uh, install Windows 10, Windows setup will go online to get updates, yada, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So just click on next. I don't know if it is focusing or not. It's, uh, it's a bit blurry. You get the idea of what I'm doing. So basically, on the Windows 10 ISO, hopefully you can see that. 
there's a there's a file called setup.exe so just double click on that and it'll say that it needs to restart windows or it will reset windows in a minute so just getting a few things ready so it'll go through uh, you have to accept the terms and conditions and it'll go ahead and check for updates and that is it it's pretty pretty straightforward and this is brilliant because you don't lose any stuff so as you can see on the left hand side hopefully if i've got the camera held right there is things installed in here so we've got csgo we've got cpuid rocket league steam install etc i have actually installed various types of rgb on this as well so really i suppose it would have been a good idea before you go ahead and do this is to uninstall any programs you're not actually using that will make it easier for windows when it does the reinstall and to write over the top of any files that it needs to address so let's check for updates so let's switch back to the other camera and um, we'll get back to some form of normality and hopefully i can see what's going on in the other camera so yeah basically get a general idea get a usb stick download the windows creation tool and then, but rather than actually booting from the usb as you would normally by restarting the computer and doing it that way all you need to do is just go into the file folder if you want to you can download it as an iso and then you can mount it that's another way of doing it but this is a really straightforward easy way of doing it and this should work i think this is live so it probably won't and if it doesn't feel free to laugh mock and dislike the video <laughs> angry doge says csgo you got excited best game uh what's that clinton davis says a oh, craig baller says hi good evening and um, private hudson says hello I've missed some things now. Where are we? Uh, Ricardo says, I remember the laser discs. I wish to buy the Use Your Illusion Tokyo concert from Guns N' Roses instead of the VHS. Laser discs. Oh, yeah. They were great. Uh, Clinton Davis says, If you already have a Windows license, providing you haven't made a lot of hardware changes, it should reactivate without much problem from fresh. Definitely, that is for Windows itself, Windows 10. Definitely, if you use your uh, Windows key with your Microsoft account, very, very strong chance it will reactivate. If you don't use it with a Microsoft account, your odds may be slightly less. But if you've logged in with a Microsoft account, normally you'll be okay, it will associate itself. The biggest problem is with Office, especially if you've got the standalone versions like Office Professional Plus. With that, generally, you're going to have to find or dig out your license key and then try and reactivate again your mileage may vary you might get an activation straight away you might not it is very much hit and miss the reason why i'm going with this method is because you don't have to worry about any of that because it's not doing anything to any of the system oh, sorry it's not doing anything to any of your program files or your save files your onedrive documents all that kind of stuff literally all this is going to do is to replace the windows system files with the versions that are actually in the latest ISO. So this is like refreshing your system files. Also things like OpenCL, dynamic link libraries, uh, those especially will get updated. Also this can be really useful if you've got a virus or some sort of malware on your system and it's still a little bit flaky after removing it. Or even if you haven't successfully removed it all, installing Windows over the top of itself, even if the system is a little bit on the flaky side, this is a really good option rather than going the full nuclear and, and just wiping the lot and starting again. So this would be kind of, in an order of things, I would say the first thing to do is obviously try wrestling with the registry, <coughs> wrestle with your system files, see if you can manually change files. If that doesn't work for you and your graphics card is still having issues or you've still got a virus or something's still just a little bit glitchy, running Windows over the top of itself is a really good way of doing it. Uh, it wants to click on install now, so we'll take a few... This is going to restart a couple of times, so when it does restart, I'm going to have to remove the USB disk so it doesn't try and boot from it. If I forget, just uh, let me know in the comments, because you might be able to see it, because I can't see both directions. I ain't got eyes in the back of the head, you know. I've only got one pair of hands, isn't it? So that is still going 3%. Yeah, that's going to take a little while, so we'll let that go on. So yeah, that is like, this is the semi-nuclear way of rectifying problems. For graphics cars, this is great. So, so many people will say to me, Mike, I've done this, I've done the uh, display driver and installer, it's still in an absolute pickle. Sometimes that can be helped out by reinstalling the drivers, chipset drivers and that, but it is, you're just wrestling with a system. So rather than wrestling and getting all bothered and taking ages doing it, just 
reinstall Windows over the top of itself. It doesn't damage any system files. If you've got anything which is cracked or illegal, obviously things like that, it's, yeah, it's gonna have issues with that kind of stuff. If you've used a KMS activator for your Windows, all that kind of stuff, it will remove those types of things. So obviously do be sensible. If you've got stuff that you've got through dubious means, then, well, yeah, you're taking your life in your own hands. But this is definitely a much better way than going full nuclear and just blitzing the system. Anyway, let's get that go on and I'll go back to the comments and see what everyone is saying. Uh, so that was that, yeah. A letter says, yeah, key is attached to Microsoft account. I've kept the same key for three motherboard changes. Yeah, you, generally you can be quite quite lucky with that. I have found, depending on how many PCs you've got and how many you've actually activated with your Microsoft account, that's when it starts getting a little bit tricky if you've got loads of PCs. Now in this household we've got one too many PCs and they're pretty much all on my same account. So that's where things start getting a little bit uh, conflicting. But anyway, we're moving on. Craig Bowler says, I removed my SSD from my old PC to my new one and it told me I needed to buy a new key. I reactivated, works fine. Happy days, yeah. Quite often it will do. Windows itself, again, like I said, is even if it's an OEM or a retail version or whatever you may have, chances are, sorry? I'll tell you. Okay, sorry. I can see it from my periphery vision. I can just see a blue screen. I'm just wondering if it's crashed. <laughs> uh, yeah, if it's OEM or retail, Chances are, same thing applies. Um, retail, generally, as long as you deactivate the account on whatever other PC it's on, you've used your Microsoft account with your username and password, retail ones are pretty much guaranteed to go across. OEMs, possibly not so much because they are more so tied to the hardware key rather than the actual individual loser. Loser? User. Aletta says, tip, if you don't like the live stream, click on the thumb down button twice. <laughs> Captain Easy Ventures says, imagine paying Microsoft a massive amount of cash for their new bug field OS. Vista, anyone? Yeah, Vista was uh, not great in its day. Although it's actually aged pretty well. If you install Vista on a PC now, it actually runs brilliantly. Uh, Waddy says, are Xeon E5, V3, V4 overclockable on X99? I've got to be honest with you, Xeons are completely out of my scope and I have I have not even owned one, let alone overclocked one. So maybe someone else can answer that in the comments. 8%, it's gonna take forever. Uh, Clinton Davis says, I recently installed Windows Pro on a laptop that had Windows 8 home license. It tried to activate it and it said it would only activate for a home edition of Windows 10. That's right, yeah, you can update from Windows 7 home eight home up to 10 home, but you can't do it to a pro. You can you can put another key in and do it that way, but that is the only way it'll do it. Can you phone home? <laughs> yeah, phone home. Uh, Craig says, question for all, best 32 inch monitor to buy. Also is curved or ultra wide worth looking at? I actually, um, I've had the AOC Q, V, C, no, Q, V something, 32, 99, whatever it is. There's tons of different models of it. But that one's been really good. It's an IPS screen. It's got uh, AMD FreeSync. It's also got Display Ports so that supports that NVIDIA G-Sync. That's the one I've got on my desk at the moment. The Use it as a daily one. And I did review it. CAF will uh, hopefully put a link in. But that's been a great monitor. The color accuracy is fantastic. Clinton Davis's Vista Service Pack 2 was okay-ish. <laughs> Richard says, what's your take on B550 boards, Mike? Essentially refined and cheaper X570, but unless they support DDR5 Ryzen 500, then what's the point? That is, um, yeah, that is a very, very decisive thing at the moment, B550. It's interesting to see how the kind of YouTube media are reacting to it. I've noticed a few people have been trying to justify the, the price hike, which I don't really think it needs justifying. I think the problem is 
the, the naming scheme. If it had been called B750, it would make complete sense because that is essentially where it is, is an X570 chipset, slightly cut down with minimal features, but at a slightly lower price, but not a different segment altogether. Whereas obviously B450 and X470 and likewise B350 and X370 were very, very different platforms, completely different segments. Whereas now the B550 is so close to X570 pricing in most cases, it's very hard to kind of work out what is going on. What's up, Kath? I got a money spider. Oh, money spider, excellent. Um, yeah, we, I think really what is gonna be interesting and what will be the kind of the new budget go-to is gonna be the A520 chipset, which we've actually heard very little about. Although, having said that, I did speak to a few of you on Discord about upgrading or upgrading my media center in the front room to one of those ASRock desk minis, which I've been really looking at getting. But I'm finding them very, very hard to get hold of at the moment. So I was kind of a little bit curious why that is. I know the A320 chipset isn't great, but for those sorts of things, it's fine. So looking into it a little bit more, there does actually seem to be a new ASRock desk mini coming out, which is using the A520 chipset. Now, spoiler alert, the A520 chipset appears to support overclocking, which is quite a new thing, especially for the low-end chipset. So bearing that in mind, if ASRock can do it on their very SFX-based motherboard, which is the A520, is there then gonna be the A520 coming out across the range for other boards in ATX and micro ATX with support for overclocking? Because if it does, I think the new A3, sorry, the new A520 boards will be a very good replacement for what was the previous segment's B450 boards. I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I think that is probably, um, probably where things are gonna go because there needs to be that segment in the market. You can't just have these B550 boards, which are all three figure boards, no matter what country you're in. Even here in the UK, the very entry board, which is the, uh, I think it's the ASRock B550 Gaming K5 or something, which is about 109 pounds. That means there is nothing in the segment below 100 pounds that you can buy, unless you step back into the B450 area, which the motherboard manufacturers don't want you to do. So I'm firmly pinning my hopes on the fact that A520, even though it should be a very entry level segment, I'm convinced it's gonna be that kind of 50 to 70 pound mark, which is for most of us is gonna be the sweet spot. And if it supports overclocking and it's got upgraded VRMs like the B550 has, which essentially is the X570 range, give or take, I think the A520 is gonna be the new go-to. We'll see what happens. So that's my little rant over, hopefully. Richard, does that answer your question? <laughs> I hope it has. Uh, Click Tech Gavs, so I remember beta testing Vista and thinking, ah, oh, this will run okay when it goes to manufacturing. <laughs> Wrong. No, it was worse. Um, a lot of it was down to, Vista gets a bad rap for what it was, but, big. It launched with a lot of companies, especially OEMs, saying that their hardware was Vista ready, which was like HD ready, which means basically it wasn't. So if you had a Vista ready laptop and it had say two gigs of RAM or maybe a gig of RAM, it didn't work. It really didn't. Yeah. Oh, rebooting, is it gonna boot from the USB? Don't boot from the USB. Is it flashing? I can't see, don't boot from the USB, don't boot from the USB. Don't boot from the USB. I'll unplug the USB, that's the safest bet. Although if it doesn't work now, I'm screwed. <laughs> it looks like it's not gonna boot at all. <laughs> Did it just go to sleep? Yeah, crap. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, mental note to self, make sure, oh crap. Make, <laughs> I think I screwed it now. Make sure if you are doing a update via USB and your machine goes to sleep and you think it's rebooting, but you're not entirely sure, wiggle the mouse first, 
just in case it is. If this sticks on 22% complete now, for a long time, I have definitely knackered it. 23%, yay, happy days. <laughs> Rescued it. Happiness. So you can plug the USB for a microsecond. So you can do that, yeah. First test. First test, that does work. <laughs> uh, Iron Boy underscore one, two, three says, hello, Mike. Good evening to you. Uh, Alessa says, for me, B550 is too little, too late. I already have a couple of X570s. Grover Clark says, same here, Aletta. Uh oh, Clinton Davis says, hi, Mike. Have you seen the new Cooler Master Masterbox Q500L case? It looks, shall we say, interesting. It would be good to see you do a vid on it. Um, yeah, the Cooler Master Masterbox Q500L, um, I think I've seen it already, and it is essentially the Q300L just that supports uh, ATX. Isn't that right? But it's got an unusual layout because the power supply is now at the front of the system. Is that right? So it's kind of at the front and twisted around so you can get the ATX layout in. So it basically blocks off most of the airflow from the front, I think. I'll have to take another look, but I'm pretty sure that is it. Um, Kevin, myself, Kev, ClickTech UK, we had a bit of a discussion on that, and yeah, no. <laughs> no it's never going to happen. Any of the Q500 range, 300 range, they were built shockingly. They were absolutely shocking. They looked like they were a massive airflow box, but they weren't. The reason being because they drilled holes in it, the holes were spaced out too much, so you blocked off basically at least 50% of the potential airflow. If you then put fans behind that, they were limited on what they could get because obviously they are a circle going over a circle and lots of other circles. So you blanked off 40% of the fans potential. And also then you had a magnetic mesh to put on the front, which closed those holes even more so. So even if you had the, the best of Noctua fans, which some people tried, you still got absolutely piss poor airflow out of those things. So. Yeah, we got we actually did get slated. I did a review on it saying how bad it was and how hot it got and all you that kind of stuff. The yeah. That's right. Cass, Cass has as Kath says, when I unboxed it, I thought, yeah, it's great. Lovely looking design, great case, all that sort of stuff. Same goes for the Masterbox Lite 3.1. Looked fantastic. Yeah, 5.1 uh, did the five as well. So yeah, the Masterbox five, the Masterbox Lite 3.1 and also the Q three hundred L. All three of them absolutely atrocious at airflow and they weren't worthy of the Cooler Master name, in my opinion, and I did say that, and everyone's like, no, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong, this great, it's all great, it's works some systems, and then, um, the mo the yeah, Monotone Jesus from Gamers Nexus did a review on it and basically said exactly the things I said, and I felt then redeemed, because if Tech Jesus says it, you know it's true. So that, I used to put his link to his video and say, well, if you don't believe me, watch this. Here is a actual YouTube proper expert right. person professional who knows what the heck he's talking about and he said the same thing as I did so I feel entirely validated. I remember your face when you watched that video. Yeah, my f watching that video was just, it was brilliant because it just like, I thought that I was being stupid or maybe I was doing something wrong but then after watching Steve go through it and him saying the same as what I said, almost word for word, it's almost like he'd watched the video but like, he, he obviously hasn't because why would he? But he, he yeah. His, his script sounded exactly the same as what I said. <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed that one. Uh, Aletta says, uh, yeah, it looks to me like the B550s are about the same price as some of the Xbox Centers, but with less features. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Uh, Steve Darby says, are they t making the X570 compatible with the new AMD XT chips with a BIOS update? Yes, they are. Um, also, B450s look like they're going to get an update as well, especially the Max versions because they've got the room to do it. If you've got a B450 or even an X370, which potentially could still get an update, it's down to the motherboard vendor really ultimately. So you may get an update, you may not. Aletta says, my PC is Windows 2000 ready and it could play Crisis if I could download it. <laughs> Okay, how many percent are we on now? 59%, woo, flying. It's not flying. The, the reason why this takes ages is because it's reading from a USB and it's actually extracting the files because as 
well, you probably know, Windows installation on a USB stick is actually in a compressed state, as it would be from a CD or DVD. So basically the CPU is actually having to decompress the files and then replace those files in the operating system and do that on a rotating basis from a USB 3 device. So it's only a USB stick, max, yeah, sorry, 3.0. Um, maximum throughput on that, if you're lucky, just on throughput is 100 megabits per second realistically, maybe 120 if you're lucky. But because it's doing compression and decompression at the same time, that puts it down to a lot slower. So this can take a while, which is why I should have downloaded it onto the desktop and done it from there. But yeah, whatever. So no other questions. I'm, I'm surprised there's no other questions or has it just gone completely dead? Oh, there we go. Um, Craig says, after looking at that review, how's the AOC uh, CQ32G1 144 hertz and curved? Ideally, if you've got the money, go for it. I would, if I had the money and I didn't have that monitor already, I would probably look for one with a higher refresh rate and possibly a curve because 32 inches when you're looking at it straight on can be a little challenging. If you've got it curved, it does make it a little bit easier. You do obviously pay a price premium for that. 144 hertz would have been better, um, but mostly the games I play, sort of Rocket League, Counter Strike Source, a few driving games, that sort of stuff, 75 hertz is absolutely fine. I'm not a professional gamer in any way, shape, or form, and I do not intend to be. And it's actually quite nice. Someone actually said this the other day about graphics and saying, What is the maximum FPS you can get? I was like, I don't know. And to be completely honest with you, I don't care. Maximum FPS means stress on your system, stress on your graphics card. And generally extra noise so if 75 Hertz is all my monitor will do I'm fine to have vSync on and lock it down at that that way graphics card stays cool CPU stays cool I can have other stuff running in the background like the uh, uploads of the videos that sort of stuff rendering tasks all that stuff can go on at the same time and I can still play games which is brilliant Alessa says, that's why I use the M.2 drive in an external case. It's much faster. Yeah, I might have to uh, invest in that. I should have actually used the, um, the silicon power, the portable SSD. That would have been much better and much faster. And it is literally there. I've got actually three different USB drives, which would have been faster. <laughs> but I did have the Windows download on there already. So there you go. Matthew Day says, try doing it with a 1.66 gigahertz Atom N450. I've been there. I have been there. I remember when Windows 10 was coming out and being released. And most of the machines that I was using at my workplace were all the Acer. Um, what were they called? The little Acer square PCs that you could mount onto the back of a, a desk. So the Acer Aspire N something series, and they basically had those Atom processors with the GeForce graphics built in. They only had two gigs of RAM, and they were sort of dual core with two threads, so they were pretty horrendous. And trying to update those and get them ready for Windows 10 on all these works PCs was an absolute nightmare. It just took so, so long. Richard says, uh, what GPUs do you currently own, Mike? Is the 5700 still the highest end card you own? Uh, no, I don't actually have a 5700. I did... Um, Matthew's asking a similar sort of question. <laughs> Mike, what's the best used GPU up to 120? Maybe the RX 580. Yep, RX 580 Nitro Edition from Sapphire. You can pick up for about 100, 110, 120 pounds. Bang for buck, can't beat it. Uh, fastest GPU I've got currently is my EVGA GTX 1070. And reason for that is because I can't find anything else on the market at a sensible enough price, which is fast enough to actually make a difference. If I'm completely honest, that one cost me, I think, £200 or £210 about a year ago. And if I spent even the same money again today, I would still get the same card. There isn't anything else really that challenges it for that sort of money. Maybe, a, well, the Vega cards were never a good idea when they came out, so... They're not a very good idea now. Vega 56, Vega 64, they would have to be significantly cheaper to make a difference. And again, they're not gonna be that much faster. I could get a 1080, something like that, if maybe like 300 pounds used, but 
three, uh, 1080 versus a seven, 1070. Well, I'll start again. A 1070 versus a 1080, king. Okay, it's kind of percentage differences, 10% if you're lucky, maybe 15 for an extra 300 quid. I can't see the point, I really can't. I'm looking forward to see what comes out in the next few weeks, straight months from Nvidia and AMD for that matter. Big Navi should have an effect on pricing and things should come down. I would like a 5700 XT. I did actually buy one, or was it 5700? Whatever it was, I bought one, it was about 310 pounds and it never turned up. So Amazon did some weird stuff and it ended up being delivered to someone who lives like four miles away. Never managed to get hold of it, so I got refunded on it. And since then, graphics card prices have just gone crazy skyrocketed, so I've not got one. And for me, the 1070 works fine. Uh, 580 I've got. Uh -oh, what's going on? Is that a screensaver or a reboot? Oh, screensaver. Oh, uh, 70%. So, yeah, there's nothing, unless any of you can point me in the right direction. Um, Simon Arden, I believe. Sardin84 on Hot UK Deals on a daily basis is pointing out stuff on their forums and also I've got him saved as a sort of recommended person so if anything comes up I'm going to be all over it but at the moment there's nothing worth getting Seam and I on the Discord yeah Seam on our Discord always posting deals and I try and post the same sort of thing on there as well but there's nothing out there the second hand market is where it's at if you can pick up a RX 580 for around about £100 it's a fine card it'll play most games, AAA games at 1080p, 60 frames per second, at least at medium to high, maybe even ultra settings, depending on the game. Far Cry 5 still runs absolutely fine on RX 580 4GB, and that's a pretty challenging game at the best of times. You still get 60 frames per second on it pretty easily. What more do you want, really? It's, again, I'm not one of these frames per second junkies. I don't need it to be 150, 100, 200 frames per second. I don't have the need for it, so... Save the money. Put the money to something else, like buying a, another SSD or some glasses <laughs> so I can actually see what's on the screen. So someone said, black screen, Mike. Thank you, Matthew. But yeah, that is, uh... yes. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading these comments. Steve Darby just got the Corsair MP600 PCIe 4 drive, fast as uck. Nice to hear. Uh, Captain Meese Adventures, have you seen the new Xiaomi streaming stick? I have the Mi Box S, which is really good. Yeah, I have seen those. Uh, yes, Kath's seen them. I think we were looking at maybe getting one sent to us, but I don't know what's happened about that. Richard said, did I imagine you owning a 5700 XT? I thought you did. Yeah, I very nearly did. Uh, Tadaman says, are GTX 970 viable these days? Got an old one gathering dust. Funny enough, uh, someone on a Facebook group, which I bought my other cars off recently, and I actually bought the older uh, EVGA GTX 970 FTW Plus. I think I bought it for about £100 or so when quite a while, a while ago, and they're still going for like £70, £80, and actually still not that bad a card. If you compared the 970 to a modern card, I would say the 970 is about the same as a 1063 gig. So, yeah, definitely viable. Steve Darby says, same here, Mike. I've got the Gigabyte GTX 1070 G1 gaming still rocks. It does. And then if a card still does well and it's a reasonable price, I don't know. I don't, I don't see a reason to upgrade it. It's... It's really nice if you've got the money and it's your hobby and you enjoy getting new stuff. But for me, this is a hobby to some extent, but it's also kind of like my work as well. So I don't want to just spunk money needlessly on stuff just so I can make a video on it to go, look, look what I've got. And I could, I could quite easily go out and buy um, 2080 Ti easily if I wanted to, but I don't see the point. It doesn't make sense to me. It's a ridiculous amount of money. I don't have a 4K monitor to really push it. Um, my other monitor is a 2K monitor, so again, I don't really need that kind of horsepower. Yeah, sure, it'd be nice to have, but I don't, I don't really see the point. And that is basically what Mike's Unboxing, the channel has always been about, about value for money, bargains, saving money where you can. 
it, this isn't Linus Tech Tips. It's not Jay's Two Cents. It's not Bitwit. It's we don't do that kind of thing. Yeah, of course, it'd be nice to look at in retrospectively in a couple of years' time when they come down to a, a reasonable price point. Hell, yeah, it'd be great. I'll be all over it. But it, that kind of bleeding edge of technology, it's just really expensive. I, I love it that people love that stuff and they buy it. Good on you. And if you enjoy it, that is absolutely fantastic because that's what this is all about. But for me, ultimately, I just I struggle to justify it. Much with processors, I, I would love to get a new processor for my editing rig. I'm currently running Ryzen 5 3600, which isn't much faster than the previous Ryzen 7 1700X. That, in some respects, feels like a sideways upgrade move thing, whatever it might be. Oh, well, that's so funny. On the video, it's just how to delete or edit shared posts. I don't know where that come from. Anyway, um, yeah, it just seems like a sideways move. And I think if I went and bought a Ryzen 7 1700X, again, it would feel like it would be marginally faster. It's all the, always these kind of incremental jumps, but for a massive stack of cash, which I just it doesn't make sense. If you've got to build a PC or you, you're replacing a PC, great, go for it. But if you're upgrading just because you need to upgrade or you want to upgrade, I don't know, it just seems a little bit... Nice. Wiggle the mouse. Is it on now? Uh, 83%. Hopefully this works. Uh, what else is it? Captain Mies Adventure says, it's like all the 8K TVs. Who would buy one as there's only a small amount of stuff in 4K even? Definitely. And again, in the UK where our broadband is absolutely rubbish, streaming 4K is actually a very difficult thing to do. On If you're an individual in the house on your own, like the old fashioned yuppies in the 80s and you've got your kind of massive 8K TV, you might be able to stream it. But for most of us in this kind of real world, where we've got a spouse, kids, uh, internet devices, home automation stuff, all of which is taking up bits of bandwidth. I struggle to stream uh, 1080p, and I've got a 100 megabit connection, but that is shared between all the devices in the house and all the people in the house. So having an 8K TV or having a 4K TV and trying to stream 4K content is not gonna be easy. And there's sort of things like Netflix. I don't think Netflix fully supports 4K streaming anyway, does it? I think Amazon Prime might do. But it automatically detects what you've got and it will adjust it accordingly. Normally they downscale and again, it's the same thing as compressed music. MP3 music isn't music as it's meant to be heard. It's compressed so you lose a lot of the stuff. Flack audio is not too bad because it's, um, it is as it should be. But most people listen to MP3s or you watch MP4s or AVIs, all of it is compressed file types. And even now, if you go and get your 1080p TV, put in a 720p DVD and play it, and then put a streamed piece of content next to it from Amazon or Netflix or whatever, I will put money on it that that 720p DVD will look better than your streamed content. It's just the way it is because you cannot stream quick enough constantly with that constant or even with a variable bit rate, you'll find that the quality will come in and out. You know, it's like you watch a long movie. If the internet goes a little bit crazy, it goes a little bit pixely or you lose a little bit of resolution. YouTube videos definitely do that all the time. Uh, here, definitely. So try it for yourself. Get yourself an old DVD player or even a Blu-ray player, even better, and stick it on your 1080p TV and watch some stream content on another monitor next to it and compare the difference. I challenge you to do it. And I, uh oh, restarting. Thank you. That's pretty warm. Uh, yeah, that's where it is. It's um, we keep on we keep on doing it. We we all do it. We all get pushed into this thing, this continual conveyor belt of upgrade cycles and updates, which for most of us isn't necessary. But kind of we get trolled into doing it. It's like oh. You've only got a 1070 or whatever. It's like, yeah, but it's fine. It does what I do. Yeah, but you should have a 2080 or you should have a 2060. It's like, why? Why? What difference will it actually make? Very, very little. And I've already spent the money, so it's not as if... Yeah, if you can sell parts and you upgrade that way, that is, for me, the perfect way of doing it because then you can logically move something on and replace it with something better. But to actually go out and buy... A graphics card when you haven't sold your old one or you're not planning on selling your old one or whatever just to keep it on a shelf somewhere seems a bit bizarre 
Uh, Richard says, Overclockers did a RX 590 for £109 as a one-off few months ago on a Friday morning for about three hours. Uh, even thought I didn't really need it, but I really wanted to pick one up. Yeah. Uh, Ricardo says, the 3080 deserves it. It's 25% or 35% better than the 2080. Or at least we hope it will be. Um, I'll wait for a 3060 or maybe a 2660. Working on updates. Sing it. <laughs> I can't. Alessa says the 590 is just overclocked 580, maybe 5% 5 faster. Yeah, that's, that is what it is. And if I was looking today at CPU upgrades. Now, if you look at the Ryzen 7 1700, the Ryzen 5 2600, the Ryzen 7 1700X, and the Ryzen 5 3600, if you put them all in a line, they're all roughly very, very similar. There's only maybe five to 10% difference between them each, each way you go. So that's kind of three generations of processor, all of which really is to re retail at similar prices and are very, very similar in performance. And that is what puts me off upgrading. It's like, why, why bother? Why go through all the hassle of building a new system Installing Windows, getting all my settings exactly how I like them, just so I can open a window one nanosecond quicker, or my games can be 10% faster, when the difference between 75 frames per second and what 85 frames per second, if I'm being generous, 10 frames per second, am I going to actually notice that? No, I won't. I know I won't. Yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll get off my high horse now. But hopefully you, you can understand what I mean. I, I don't see the point of getting the latest and greatest unless you have a real need for it. I I don't. It would be, yes, nice to have, but I don't really need it. Uh, Kevin says, I picked up a 3600 XT and paired it with a 3600 processor. Games very well. 3600 XT confused now very confused okay uh, what did Dave say 5600 alright I don't think Dave mm. said anything alright oh, oh, it's due to, due to evolution Ah, Kevin says 5600. I understand now. 5600 XT with a 3600 processor. Testing you. Got you. I was confused a little bit there. It's um, done. It's done. Uh oh. Got to put my uh, super, super secret password in. Hi. We've got some updates for your PC. Now there's a surprise, I didn't expect that at all. That was weird, I sat down, I saw it on here, and then I saw it on there a few seconds later. How strange. Uh, Captain Meese Ventures says, to be fair, you can buy a 50 inch 4K TV with Dolby Vision and HDR for about 300 quid. Home tech has, yeah, TVs actually have come down in price quite a lot. That's because there's gonna be nothing on it. Yeah, there's nothing to watch on it. Bro. I wonder if that's why monitors are actually dearer than TV screens now. Because people are actually using their computers because working from home and all that kind of stuff. Whereas TVs, people don't want them because there's nothing to watch. It just repeats. Skystalker says, I usually upgrade the latest and greatest when I need to build a computer for a kid stroke friend. Yep, yeah, that totally makes sense. That is exactly what I do. This PC that I've put together is built from bits, a couple of bits I've had lying around, but bits that I've used. So when I get rid of that, then I can justifiably say, yes, I will get myself a new motherboard, new processor, new RAM, new case, new everything, and start again. Totally justified, but I won't spend, I, I still won't go on the bleeding edge. PCI Express 4, I don't think I necessarily need. Um, I don't necessarily need 12 cores or 16 cores or whatever. Again, would be nice, but I don't think it's going to happen. But I am really... Steve, oh, Steve Darby says goodnight. Night, Steve. 
And hello to uh, Mystic Gaming. Yes. Mr. Gaming says got a new Ryzen 7 2700 for only 150 bucks on Amazon. Uh, paired it with a GTX 1650 Super. That's funny. The 1650 Super is what I've just kind of, well, almost upgraded. Have I upgraded or sidegraded? I've gone from an RX 580 4 gig to a 1650 Super 4 gig. They're both kind of very similar. Right, Windows has installed. And there we go. We've got all our programs still there. And everything should run. And actually, straight away, my Windows start bar is working and working pretty quickly. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to let it carry on and do its thing so it doesn't upset itself. But there we go. A little bit of uh, time to chat. What does that take? <laughs> About an hour, half an hour. And there we go. And hopefully now, fingers crossed, I won't have any issues with, uh, thank you. I won't have any issues with starting up again because previously it wouldn't start up Rocket League. It come up with the error saying OpenCL. No, it wasn't OpenCL, it was some other strange message which I don't even recall seeing. But hopefully it'll open, let's see. It's probably not a good idea to do it quite so quickly after it rebooted. Hey, we'll see. I might still nuke it anyway. Yeah, it's definitely still doing something in the background. Can't see much of that screen, does that matter? No, it's probably for the best. And uh, that's why Rocket League is downloading from OneDrive. Cloud services, see? Oh, I better mute that so I don't get demonetized. Oh, I've gone back to using my Rio Toro Ghostwriter RGB keyboard for actually stupid reasons. I did have on there the MSI GH30, I think it was, keyboard, and it was driving me a little bit insane because it didn't have this, the scroll wheel for volume and the hardware mute button. The amount of times I actually use that is phenomenal. It's just so handy to have it there. I love that scroll wheel, it's got such a nice feel. These are actually on sale at the moment from CCL, I think it is CCL at the moment, at about £55, which actually I should address CCL about that, shouldn't I? I should update, yes, I will update very shortly. But this is a, a Cherry, a genuine Cherry MX brown keyboard, really nice font, really easy to type on, RGB and all that kind of stuff. The software isn't great, let's be fair, for the RGB, but you can control it all on there. But £55 for this is brilliant, and it's got the Cherry keys. They are soldered, not uh, hot swappable, which is a little bit of a pain. So you do have to get the solder and iron out if you want to change a switch, which actually someone on one of the videos, or no, actually it was, this was on a comment someone's made, saying that um, I said that some keyboards don't have solder switches. They have hot swappable switches. And this guy replied and said, no, all switches are soldered. I was like, but you've just watched the video where you've seen me pull one out of the motherboard. Like, literally like that. Motherboard? Uh, keyboard, sorry, not motherboard. And it's like, oh dear. Yeah, so I suppose the, technically the switch holder would have been soldered in, but the switch itself is removable. Anyway, I digress. So, CCL, let's update on that because I have given them a, a rough time recently, justifiably, and some of the other viewers that have contacted me privately have also said very similar things already about issues things not being sent out not being returned etc etc and literally a day after well last saturday wasn't it last saturday we did it didn't we yeah. yeah last saturday we did the stream and on monday morning lo and behold we had the full refund from ccl for the motherboard which okay happy with that that's job done so ready to buy another motherboard so pain, pain in the backside that I had to go through all that hassle but ironically for some reason managed to get it straight away on Monday morning so maybe the video helped maybe it didn't maybe it's coincidence I don't know don't care I got my money back that's all that matters now I did say at the time I did post somewhere that I um, I got got it minus a handling charge which was actually incorrect so I put my hands up there and say sorry it was actually correct they didn't refund the postage price or 
um, anything like that. So literally it was £142 I got back and it cost me about seven or eight pounds in postage. So that's kind of written off. They don't refund the postage because that isn't part of it. So my mistake on there, I was expecting 150, thinking it was 149.99 with free postage like it is on Amazon, but it wasn't. That was my mistake entirely. So yeah, hands up there. Unfortunately, still they have not contacted me, referenced the Game Max F15 case and the broken fan. So that is still outstanding. And to be completely honest with you, I'm probably just gonna forget about it and maybe in future give CCL still a bit of a wide berth. I may be tempted to try them again once this whole COVID thing settles down, but I thought I would just update to say that I did get the refund, at least what I should have had. Um, but there's still, there is that issue with the customer service not addressing the case damage. So uh, maybe I'll chase that up at a later date. I don't know, maybe Monday I'll speak to them, see what's going on. It could potentially be because Game Max are um, maybe in semi shutdown or whatever at the moment. I've not heard a lot from them either. So potentially that could be it. They may be trying to get into, into contact with Game Max and struggling to get in contact with them, but they haven't told me that. So I don't know for sure. So don't quote me on that, but I will, uh, I will be looking into that and see what's going on, but I just thought I'd update you on CCL. Uh, Aletta says, it looks like a nice keyboard after you turn off the RGB. Now that's a good thing about the Rio Toro keyboard. If you turn off the RGB, it actually still runs really well because the, the legend or the, the font on the keys is really, really good. It's really easily legible. Even from my old man eyes, I can see the keyboard quite happily. I don't need to dig out the specs. And let's see, options. Sorry, I was gonna run a little bit of a is there a benchmark in this game? I do not know. Maybe there is. Back. Uh, extras. Replays, check for XML Max, for this mode. I don't think there is actually. No, there isn't. Oh, that's a shame. Anyway, moving on. So anyway, Rocket League opens and works. So. Windows update or Windows install over the top of itself seems to have done the trick. Exit game, and I'll let it do some Windows updates. Oh, Windows isn't activated, here we go. Windows reported that no product key was found on your device, error code 0xc0 blah 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 blah. Now there is a good reason for that because there's a different motherboard in there than what was in there. Originally that was in my <laughs> Um, little media PC with the AM1 chipset. So it's gone from that into the build I did the other day, and then it's gone into this. So yeah, it's a, a completely set of new hardware in there. So that's completely understandable. So I'll have to go onto premium CD keys a little bit later and grab myself a key, get that all legitimized. Although saying that because I'm selling the PC on after I've done some t benchmarks and tests, I might just zap it and put a new key on anyway. So anyway, that is that done. Let's have a look at the rest of the questions here. Uh, click tech care says CCL, no. Craig Bowler says, I ended up with the MSI B450 Pro Carbon uh, for Wi-Fi options. If I move my PC around, it has great thermals with my 3700X. Oh, that's great. I did really want a MSI B450 Pro Carbon, but I wanted the Max version, which was supposedly supposed to be out, but uh, I've not seen it. And I think with the B550 stuff coming out, I think it's basically never gonna happen now. Duty Evolution says, I would like to make a computer case in the shape of an Atat Walker from Star Wars. That does sound brilliant. See about that Mario one. Oh yeah, somebody posted on our Discord, uh, a Super Mario one with water cooling is great. Michael Thorne, uh, not too worried about the upside down text. Oh, I don't know. Oh yeah, the RL08 is left-handed, yes. Yeah, that is. That was an off-putting thing. Actually, um, Sharkoon have reached out to us and asked us to review a couple more cases. We did have two options. There was one which was a case which had a 90 degree twisted setup and all the IO came out of the top. And that for me seemed a little bit too weird for a, what was supposed to be a, a kind of like a showpiece PC. So we are gonna be getting the TG5 Pro, which is the new updated version of the TG5, which is a classic case, sold 
millions of cases of those. So they've updated it for 2020. So we're getting one of those to check out very soon. That's going to be interesting. And hopefully it's not going to be in such a big box as the Thermal Tape View 51, which was massive. The box for the View 51 was about almost the same size as this desk. It's massive, genuinely massive. Poor calf if the uh, the UPS man comes to collect or deliver or whatever. Yeah. He's going to have to come in. He's going to have to come in. To hell with COVID. I can't move the box. It's ridiculous. Uh, Duty Evolution says, I have a X470, but it doesn't support PCIe 4, and I want a RX5, uh, an RX5700 XT or RX2070 Super. Uh, yes, I have reviewed the RL08. <laughs> All right, that's how you found the channel. Didn't seem overly impressed, so I was wondering if it was a good, what was a good alternative. I got you, I got you. Um, there isn't inverted cases. I I don't get them. I really don't. Everything is tailored for RGB or looks these days. So as soon as you get an inverted case, anything which is supposed to look good normally what's looks upside down. What's inverted? Uh, like upside down. So what were the power supply at the top? Not necessarily. Just the motherboard switched to 180. Uh -huh. So CPU at the bottom. It's a weird. Inverted cases are a weird design. They kind of go against most of the laws of physics. And muscle memory. And muscle memory, yeah, definitely muscle memory. When I tried building the thing, I was like, oh, God, what's going on? I can't cope. It was horrendous. Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, there's an interesting one. MH says, would you recommend the ASRock B450 Pro 4T or the Pro 4? I don't know what the Pro 4T is. The T version is around eight pounds cheaper, but unsure on the exact difference. I can see it has less SATA ports and no Wi-Fi. Um, well, the Pro 4 never had Wi-Fi. That was never part of it. The Pro 4 was the budget range. The Some of the Steel Legends had Wi-Fi. I'm pretty sure the Pro 4, actually, it depends what country you're in. ASRock have got a thing like Acer where they change the specs for different uh, geographic locations. But I've never heard of the Pro 4T. That's an interesting one. If you've got a link for it, put a link in the comments and I'll maybe take a look at it a little bit later. Or uh, put it on our Discord and I'll take a look and I'll give you my opinion on it. Aletta says, my case has turned 90 degrees with the IO at the top. I like it. Yeah, it just seems really weird, IO at the top. Don't know why. I, it just doesn't work for me. My autistic brain is like, no, that shouldn't be there. It should not be there. That was my problem with the um, in-win case. The, I can't remember what it's called now. What's the in-win case called, Calf? The one with the fabric sides. Alice. In-win Alice. Because I had IO at the top, that freaked me out. And it really, yeah, I couldn't get on with that at all. I should have just turned it upside down. Actually, what did I think of that before? That would have been perfect. Just turn it upside down. Surely that would work. Maybe it wouldn't. I'll have to have a look. Don't think it will. Because no, I had a base like plate, didn't it? Yeah, and legs. No, that won't work. Uh, okay. But you like dressing her, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Craig Bowler says, Mike, I bought the Game Max case after your review and it's been perfect for what I need. Awesome. That is great to hear. Uh, Ricardo says, another massive one from Thermal Take is the AHT600. Not seen that one. that. <laughs> Craig Bowler says I then got the Arctic Freezer 2 240 after your measurements on the next build vid. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, ClickTech says so you, you can have the case on the left instead of the right. Mm, yeah, that is pretty much what inverted really does. It's just it's just weird. The, I don't I don't get it. It confuses me. It upsets me. But then your studio would be perfect because you're always moaning that it's on the wrong I side. I do I do moan that the studio at the moment is everything is on the wrong side. For PC stuff, it, the camera should be facing that way, with the camera there facing that way. It, that's how it should be, but it's not, and it, so those it frustrates me. Cases would be better. Yeah, left-handed case would be okay there, but it wouldn't be because you'd see that would be a blank side, so it'd have to be yeah, the cables come out. Reviewing them. 
Oh yeah, yeah, when I'm reviewing it, it'll be okay. Captain Neat Adventure says, Echo Thoughts and Fire Sticks are on offer on Amazon. Handy for streaming, as long as your internet's up for it. And in fact, actually, Amazon Prime Day has been delayed, hasn't it? Because it should be around about now. No, it's a, yeah, it could be. It is it around be about now. birthday, about the 12th of July, but yeah. it has been earlier in June. It'll be interesting to see when that happens this year. Uh, I've been asked to check out the Sharkoon Rev 200 case, the one that has the IO also on the top. That's the one they wanted to send me. I'm sure it is. Yeah, Sharkoon Rev 200, that is the one. Is that the one on the email? I'm sure it is, yeah. That is the one they wanted to send me, and I'm like, oh, it's got IO on the top. I don't think I can cope with that. Because that, unless there's some sort of cable management that goes down the side or the back, then how do you just stop it looking like an absolute mess? The whole point of having the IO at the rear is so that it looks clean, rather than looking like some kind of Ghostbusters project where you've got all these wires sticking out here, there and everywhere. It's alright if you've got like a wireless keyboard and maybe a right angled HDMI connector, but if you've got loads of things like a, a net, oh yeah, it is Rev, yeah, Rev 220 was the one they wanted to send me. Um, yeah, this is, uh, no. Sky Stalker says, but Mike, this is your look, no changing it. I couldn't change it even if I wanted to, I'd have to move house. But you tried it. I did try it and it didn't work. One video. That upset me. Uh, MH says the Pro 4 F is on Amazon for £67.50 at the moment. Calf, stick that in Amazon. ASRock B450 Pro F F. I want to see what that is. Can you? you when were you upgraded? Will you? <laughs> I'm going to take a look at that. Matthew Day says, for an optical dry fitting case, the Fractal Focus G may be well for a look. Optical drives, what are they? What do you want now? Um, how much is it? And what is the difference design? 758. So what is the difference on that then? Over the, oh, is that a Micro ATX? Yeah. So it should be an M. Is that a Dash F? Pro 4 AMD B450 AM4 Micro. Hmm. Leave that on there. I'm going to take a look at that. I might have to buy one of those. Uh, Kev says I have the same problem. Yeah. Uh, MH says I don't have Discord, so if you could let me know any other way, I would appreciate it. Uh, looking to do my first PC build later this year and considering the Pro 4 so I can OC. MH, best thing to do, drop me an email, mike at mikesunboxing.com. It's actually, yeah. It should be in the description at the bottom. If, oh, got, so there we go. Mike at mikesunboxing.com. Simple things please me, they really do. Yeah, just send me, send it's, me, it's <laughs> send me an email and uh, I'll definitely take a look at that. I'm actually tempted to buy one myself. Because Micro ATX, I got a feeling someone was, who would want to send us a Micro ATX case? But I didn't have a Micro, micro ATX board. So I turned it down. Can't remember what it was. Maybe I will have to give Micro ATX one more time. Uh, Doriente, I'm, I'm not sure if I said that wrong. Uh, cable management is guided at the top and covered. But surely it still must come along the top, but then down somewhere, like down the back, I guess. So if you've got slightly short cables, you're going to struggle with that. Unless it says that Mike sunboxing.com. Yeah, that's right. Actually, quite a few times if you've, if you've searched for Mike's unboxing, it comes up with Mike Tyson boxing, which is, uh, I don't know why, if, if that's why the channel's been quite popular because people are searching for Mike Tyson and they've accidentally found the channel and thought, hmm, let's check this guy out. I can't see any relevance there, but still, you never know. It might be what happening. Uh, ben Shield says, what do you think of the specs of the new games consoles coming out? I think it is good. 
because it means it'll push manufacturers to bring it out to PCs. But the PC is still going to be quicker, faster, better, faster, stronger, longer, all that kind of stuff. Consoles, I've really, really lost the uh, the whole kind of thing for. I don't like them much. I don't particularly get them. I don't think they're worth the money. Maybe a used one a couple of years down the line. Like there's some games. There was a, um, a weird jungle quiz game, I think it was, where you have these little buzzers on the PlayStation 2 that we played at Calf's Brother's House. I would consider going and buy a PS2 just and those little buzzers just to play that game. It wasn't, I think it was little mini games, not yeah. questions. Yeah, it was mini games within the games, wasn't it? But whatever it was, it was just like, yeah, that seemed pretty cool. I'd buy one for that for like £20 or £30 or whatever. Spending 500 quid on a console to me seems like, why wouldn't I just build a PC? We did buy that a, was 500 quid. We did buy that singing game for George's PS4. And he won't let us use it, it's still in the cellar oh, yeah. somewhere. Yeah, we bought SingStar for the PS4 and it's still in the shrink wrap because George will not let us use his console. So I think it's just hurtful. He has heard us sing before. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right, okay, there's nothing else for it. I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna blast it. Oh, they don't wanna fit. Oh. I have to stand up. Right, is there anything on this I need to save before I... Uh, what the hell. Power, restart. Now, if anyone can remember what the key is to get the boot menu up on the ASRock B450 Pro 4 before I actually need to do it and can put it in the comments, that would be great. I'm thinking it's F8. Maybe F9 or F10. <laughs> it's going to be one of those. Oh, it says there, oh, F11. Yay! Right, let's blast it. Hopefully this will be a little bit quicker. ClickTech says, uh, <laughs> ClickTech says, uh, Buzz and SingStar, when drunk, are what PS2 is all about. Captain Meat. Good job you put trousers on tonight, Mike, yep. Yeah. Thank God Mike was not wearing suspenders then. <laughs> you should do that for a long time. I'm going to do that one day for just for shits and giggles. Come on, Windows. F8 is for Windows. It used to be. Ubuntu Dreads in the house. Been listening while on with a mare of a cable tidy. <laughs> Fitting side panel was like closing the wife's suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, activate Windows. Uh, no, nope, don't think we will. I don't have a product key. Uh, Windows 10 Pro. X64. Accept the license terms because, well, you haven't really got much choice, have you? Delete partition. Delete partition. Delete partition. Unarchived space next. There we go. Right, let's get into proper Kerry Holzman territory right now. Yeah, I actually I really miss F8 being how to get into safe mode. Why did they get rid of that? That was one of the best things about Windows. It really would. JG says, I never understood why GPUs are made like they are at Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. That's me. Surely PCB on top side would be a lot better. Um, kind of, I guess, yeah. It's, it's about cooling is a very strange thing. And traditionally what you think of in the laws of physics don't always necessarily apply. So in theory, you think heat rises, but when you get into other dynamics inside of the case, like case pressure, positive, negative pressure, airflow direction, that doesn't always play into it. If you, if you take something hot into space, the heat doesn't rise. It just kind of moves out from where it is, radiates. So depending what your case pressure is like, it can affect where the thermals are. But yeah, 
also having a metal back plate on the back if it is actually attached to something it's a good idea because it's more surface area if it's just a cover not such a good idea because it's actually stopping airflow from getting into the components if that's what you're meaning i get entirely what you're on about windows needs to restart that was quick Please don't boot from the USB. 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 Actually, just booting at all would be nice. Go on, you can do it. Go on. Does this look like Windows setup? It does. Starting services, getting devices ready. In that case, we can take that out. Don't need that anymore. Ben Shields asks if you've got any beer tonight. Do you want a beer? I haven't, but I would like one. Okay. Was that vodka in that glass? If that was vodka in that glass, I would currently be probably under the desk singing songs about little tiny goblins. That was a Blackadder reference for anyone who's younger than... Older than 30. <coughs> Cheers, everybody. <sighs> Carlsberg. One of the best things to come out of Danish. I thought you were going to say Mike's <laughs> It says Danish on there. It's not obviously from Danish, because that's a people, not a place. I'm not entirely stupid. <clears throat> ben Shield says cheers. A letter says save money instead of activating Windows, just make the desktop wallpaper the same colour as the not activated text size. Uh, the text. That's a good idea. A letter says ever try dragon's milk? Don't think so. Some kind of. I'll, I'll have to look it up. Some kind of. Guinness oh, is it a Guinness? Is it a stout? That would make sense. <laughs> Captain Meese Adventure says, I'm a YouTuber and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. I wear high heels, I'm spenders on a bra. I haven't got the rest of it. It's the, a stout with bourbon and lemon percent. That's the ooh. next line. <laughs> That's not the next line. I can't sing that. <laughs> ooh. Looks like all this um, stuff which has been going on recently has added more keyboard layouts. Amazing. A stout with bourbon. What is bourbon? Out of interest. It's kind of whiskey in there. Uh, I've always wondered what a bourbon is, apart from a biscuit in the UK. That's a bourbon. Bourbon. That's well, French then, isn't it? Is that French for biscuity chocolate stuff? Good. <laughs> bourbon. Hey, a bon is good, isn't it? We're really going off topic right now. Set up for personal well, use. Well, it's to me. Yeah. Sonia with Microsoft, um, offline account, thank you very much. Limited experience, please. Who's going to use this PC? Peanut. New user. Create a really memorable password. Next. <laughs> Never, ever do that. What is a Bourbon, everybody? I want to know. Is Bourbon like, um, Bourbon? Is that like Southern Comfort? Is that a Bourbon? No. Or is that a liqueur? Liqueur. I don't know. I don't know about alcohol. Don't use that. Uh, don't use tracking. She Angel, she'd know. She would. Don't want any of those things. Uh, nope. Don't want activity history. Cortana, no. 
J. No. James just bought Game Max F15 based on your review. J. James, hi Mike, just ordered the Game Max F15 mesh based on your review. <laughs> you actually believe what I said? I was paid to say all that. It's rubbish. No, I'm joking. A good case, brilliant case. And actually, there is one currently sat over there. Still use it. It's my daily driver. Love that case. In fact, I would love to be able to design a case better than that for the same money, and I don't think I could. I think I'd really struggle. The one thing you will struggle on, if you don't go about it the right way, is setting up the fans. The PWM controller and setting up the fans of your motherboard is something of a witch witchcrafty kind of spell thing you have to do and with a little bit of luck thrown in. I'm almost tempted to make a dedicated video purely on how to set that up because it is a little bit frustrating, but what I found is a really easy way of doing it, or to make it simpler, Go into your motherboard, go into all your fan settings apart from your CPU and set all the fan headers to zero RPM. The reason behind that is because if you, on the remote control, you've got options for, ah, that's why my fans were louder. I just realized that I, the case I was working on here has got the same controller as in that one. That didn't occur. Anyway. Moving on, so yeah, set your fans to zero RPM, so when you press the button on the remote control to switch between motherboard and auto fans, you know which one is which. Otherwise, when you press the button, you're not entirely sure which RPM mode is in. So trying to run something like a fan expert or fan monitor or any of those profiling softwares is really, really difficult to do. So if you set your BIOS to zero fans, you can press the button and when the fans stop, you obviously know that you're in motherboard mode. Then you can run your fan expert software and get the RPMs to register correctly. You're welcome. And will it accommodate? Uh, will it accommodate the, RG <laughs> the Asus ROG Strix X570F? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'll have to look at that, but as long as it's a normal ATX board, then yeah. A letter says I have the fans in my system set to a constant 800 RPM, so they stay quiet. That's a good idea. Uh, uh, hardware changes of... oh, whatever. Oh, look at that loveliness. Uh, reboot. Restart to sender. That's enough of that. Um, actually, talking about fan RPMs, that was one of the downsides of that thermal take case we did the review of the other day. With the static fans. What is all that about? That really like blew my mind. £200 for a case, and you get static RPM fans. That is a bit of a cop-out. I really don't understand that case. Like I said, the Thermal Take View 51, if they supplied it as a bare metal case without the fans and controller, for about 100, 110 pounds, it would be pretty much online with the um, Lianli 011. It would also be very similar to the Antec P120, is it? Which is kind of like the rip-off version of that as well. And it would be at a good price. So I don't know why they didn't think of that. That would have been, wow, is that rebooted already? I better make sure again. That's a bit quick. Uh, J. James says, only because I'm going to order a Ryzen 9 bundle with that motherboard. Wow. Awesome. Um, and a Wraith Prism cooler. If you're going with a Ryzen 9, the Wraith Prism might not be the one for you. I would put something a little bit more expensive in there, personally. Hey! Ah, we have a super chat from Skystalker, who's sent in 10 Canadian dollars. And he says, we need some disco ball action. So for those of you who do not know what the F is going on, actually, is that camera even straight? Maybe not. If you send a super chat, disco ball goes off, we get disco lighting, and I get to read out your question or comment. And I did that already. And also, CAF gets to turn off a couple of lights so you can actually see it. And then the white balance goes weird and I look odd, or more odd. 
Uh, that says I have high static pressure fans because I have 64 mil thick radiators. Wow, that is insane. Uh, Jay Jones says it comes in the bundle. Okay. Fair dues. Yep, thanks, Sky. What a lovely, lovely man. Canadia are lucky to have him. They really are. Uh, Amjad, I hope I pronounced that right. I, I hope I have, sorry. Um, it says, I'm going to bed now because I'm tired and I'll see you guys later. Good night. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. One of you's got to. <laughs> Here's a good one. Uh, this is from Canal. Hopefully, again, I pronounced that correctly. My Intel graphic card control panel is showing zero megabytes NVIDIA graphic memory. Um, well, is it working? If it's working okay, I wouldn't worry about it. Alessa says, what's with all these people going to bed? I haven't slept for two days. <laughs> Hamchat says, good night. Excellent, I got it right, hopefully. Good night. Oh, did that reboot? Oh, I probably said that and tracked it. Right, what do we need drivers wise? This is quite a nippy little system. Ryzen 5 2600. There's a great chip. Babes. Hello? Oh, not me. No, so, what we got? Yeah, everything is installed by the look of it. All the drivers. Lovely jubbly. Let's do some AMD driver goodies. AMD. So, one of the first things you should do after you've just freshly installed Windows is uh, go to AMD and get your chipset drivers. If you're using Intel, then uh, sorry. I'm sorry for your loss. Although some people would say the first thing to do would be to install Chrome. Oh, cancel that, don't want that. So go into uh, drivers and support. Oh, we were there. And chipsets, and um, socket M4, and X, no, sorry, B450. Submit. And um, we don't want feedback, so go away. 10 bit, oh, 10 bit, Windows 10, 64 bit even. Wow. Do you have Windows 10 install tutorial on your channel? That's that one. How to install Windows 10 from a USB drive, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Somebody asked for that. Yeah, so I have a Windows installation tutorial, MH, and CAF is actually uh, doing it. Is it working yet, Kerry? <laughs> it's just about. Needs to get those chipset drivers in, because that is very important. I try not to do anything else until I've actually got the chipset drivers in. Get those in first, because that gives you a really good kind of um, platform to then install all your other stuff onto. Matthew Day says, Edge is now Chromium powered. Yeah, for some reason, this is still not put in the um, the new version. It's put in the old version. So you can't really see this at the moment, so it's probably irrelevant, but let's have a number four. So when you install the chipset drivers, you can tell what needs to be installed because it'll have ticks by it if it hasn't been installed already. So this is why I install it because you've got the AMD Ryzen power plan You've got the GPIO driver, the AMD PSP driver, PCI Express driver, GPIO driver for Pro Monitoring, and the AMD SM bus driver. And sometimes if you don't have those installed, you can actually have loads and loads of problems. Enough problems to drive you to drink. So anyway, we're going to install those now. AMD Ryzen. It's unusual. Actually, why have they done that? They've gone green. Because AMD used to always be Team Red, but now they've got green for the chipset and also the CPUs. Like they used to be back in the day, uh, back in the early 2000s, if you bought an Athlon XP chip, it was on a green substrate and the packaging was mostly green. Green and white, with a bit of orange sometimes if you're lucky.
Go back, we've got to go back. I've seen your video on DDU software. Oh, what's that from Canal? Yeah. No, it's not working, it's showing the error 43. Uh, yes, so. Uh, still shows the same error. Yeah, I would say if you're not sure, jump on the Discord or actually just do what I just did. So if you can, watch this from the beginning. And I actually installed Windows over the top of itself to try and repair graphics issues, which is a pretty good way of doing it. But i got to restart. Yeah, sometimes we, even though you're using DDU, it's a Windows issue, so you can run things like um, sfc.exe forward slash scan now. Um, that's system file checker. Many other ways you can do it. ClickTech says, I failed to install the chipset drivers properly or at all and ended up with blue screens. Seriously, people do not put enough credence on how important chipset drivers really are. I don't think in the last five years or more that when I've installed AMD-based systems, I've always done chipset drivers first, and it's very, very rare that I get a problem, unless I start swapping hardware, and in that case it all goes a bit crazy. So now we can do the AMD drivers for the graphics card that was almost uh, German apologize for that uh, it's a 500 series and it's an RX 500 RX 580 and submit Windows 10 download yeah whatever save right I'll start saving hopefully that won't uh, absolutely destroy the bandwidth Alessa says, when I get a new GPU, I always do a fresh install of Windows. It is a really good way of doing it. What about J. Jones? Uh, J. Jones. Uh, other options they can include instead of Wraith are Kudomaster Liquid Light 120mm. Nah. Corsair Hydro H450 120mm. Nah. Um, I would probably go... Well, none of them are particularly great options. The Cooler Master ML240 L240 RGB liquid cooler is probably the one I would be more confident with, but um, ideally I would suggest a 120mm co uh, tower cooler would be your best bet. I suppose it depends what um, what else you're putting in the system or what your plans are. Yeah, if, if it's part of a kit, then if the Wraith one is the cheapest option, I'd probably stick with that and then just replace it at a later date if you need to. You might not need to. If you've got enough airflow in the case, which you probably have because it's the F15, so it's got pretty decent airflow, you may not need to change the cooler anyway. If it's the Wraith Prism, it's not a bad one. It's just that they can get a little bit noisy when they're ramped up a little bit. Uh, Clinton Davis says, I find the Intel driver updates all useful for installing AMD, uh, Intel chipset drivers. It's good. Matthew Day says, now I'm trying to remember the DISM options. Yeah, the, there was, uh, the DISM options, there was uh, Restore Good, I think, isn't there? I forget, there's so many different ones to that. Canal says, should I try on another OS like Linux or something? Because trust me, I've done everything, including formatting. You could try Linux and run it as a, a live CD and see if it actually installs and works as a graphics card. I would imagine it's unlikely to be a problem with the card itself. If it's an error 43, it could be hardware. It's possible. So yeah, if you can get a live dis, uh, Linux distro you can install some drivers on, it might not be a bad idea. All right, so we can start running the AMD drivers. Driver. Install, install. Oh, come on, any time today. 
Jay Jones says maybe down the line of an Arctic liquid freezer to 240. That is a fantastic idea. Uh, Tushar or Tushar? Which third party 2080 Super should I buy? Please help. Well, arguably you can never go wrong with EVGA. EVGA cards generally tend to be exceptionally well built, well made. You do pay a very slight price premium. I would probably avoid, avoid the ASUS ones because they do have the ASUS tax on them. MSI, generally not a bad shout. A gigabyte is probably a good option as well. Probably I would go EVGA. Very rarely did anyone ever regret buying EVGA. Factory reset, why is it saying that? I don't want to do that. Go on in, do whatever you want to do. If it says it wants to do it, do it. Uh, Japan one says bad RAM on a GPU can give you error 43. I had an RTX 2070 with that problem. Yeah, so maybe it is worth sticking a, uh, a Linux distro on there and giving it a, some hardware testing. Skystalker says, I haven't tried this, but intend to. Linus has a video that shows you can run the entire Linux system on an external and an external thumb drive, no installation required. Uh, yeah, it's very doable. You can you can get live CDs as well, which run in RAM memory. But CDs are obviously a bit of a thing of the past these days, so. Matthew Day, nobody ever got fired for buying IBM. Yeah, that was the tagline. I do remember that. Okay, so what time is it now? It is, blimey Charlie, it's 10 past 11 almost, so I think we better wrap things up. We've been going on for two hours more now. And I've got things to do, and I've got work tomorrow as well, which sucks, major ballsack. But on that bombshell, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you've had a, uh, some, a minimal amount of entertainment tonight. Thank you for Skype for the Super Chat, and thank you all for your comments and questions and all that kind of malarkey. If you've got any more questions or anything that I haven't answered here or anything you want to go in slightly more depth, you can join our Discord, which the links will be in the video description, and they're probably in the chat somewhere as well if you want to get in directly. Other than that, you can email me, mike at mikesunboxing.com. Can't guarantee I'll get back to you as quick as um, you would like at some points, because we are getting more and more emails all the time, so it is getting pretty tough answering everyone's questions, but we do what we can. And, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much wraps things up. So... Petasaurus, just quickly. What's that? Petasaurus. Oh. Hi everyone, how's the arms case doing? Alright, that's um where are we? I can't oh Peter is that one? Yeah. Yeah, Peter Sores. Let's quickly answer that. So hi everyone and Mike, how's the Ions case doing? Or GameX F15 mesh is a better choice. To be honest with you, between the two, it's a very tough choice. I really do like the Ions case, and that is actually what is in this PC behind me, as you can see at the moment is uh, actually done really well and the airflow is really good in it I've got no complaints there the only thing is when you start putting RGB fans in and a controller it bumps the price up and you start getting to almost where the game max case is so if you don't want the hassle and you want bigger fans and a slightly bigger case the game max f15 definitely absolute winner I use it as my daily driver daily <laughs> um, if you want something a little bit more compact you haven't got a lot of room or you maybe don't want all the RGB bling, or you want to add what you've got already, then the, uh, the IONS KZ10, definitely worth a look. And again, for £27 as it is, I think, at the moment on Amazon, even if you buy it and you don't like it or whatever, it's going to be pretty easy to move on or to use in a sort of, sort of cheap build to flip on. You can't really go too far wrong. I, I like it. I don't regret it in any way, shape, or form. And I think it's one of those things where I can build a PC into it, and I know it's going to be super easy to sell on to someone because it just looks the part. Um, obviously, you don't need as many fans as that. You could just put a couple of fans in there and an RGB strip, and you're good to go. Sure, as well, quickly. 
Um, what was the question? How's my build? Can you tell? Ryzen 7 3200X, uh, two sticks of RAM, or a sleep motherboard. Too sharp? That is great. It looks good. I'm, I have um, PC Envy. That does sound like a great system. And hopefully you have a lot of fun building it. Okay, so that is it. Uh, yeah, Craig Buller says F15, great case, worth 60 quid. Definitely. I, I can't fault it. I generally can't fault it. I, I I wish I could because I'd like to find faults in cases and well anything really. I like to find the faults just so that I can make you guys aware of them and you, so you don't have to suffer them as well. But F15, apart from the possible PWM conflicts when you're trying to set up, other than that, it's a, a damn decent case and I'm glad I bought it. I might buy another one. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the stream. Don't forget to slap a like on the video or the stream before you go that is very helpful and all helps out with the algorithm and all that stuff and um oh yeah happy father's day tomorrow for all those out there that are fathers and even for those that are mothers who are doing the job as fathers and hey strange times these things happen and if you're maybe multi-gender and you do a bit of both so whatever the case may be happy father's day to all of you and hopefully we'll see you in the very next video thanks for watching